Good afternoon. I'm Steve Turner again, continuing on with our Employee Relations Leadership Series. I finished our third video last week, and I covered some uh, important information on uh, leadership approaches, etc. Today, I'm going to focus on one topic, and I touched on it the last time, but I want to take it to a higher level because this is critical when it comes to being a successful employee leader. And when I say successful, I don't mean from the perspective of generating numbers. I mean it from the perspective of generating relationships with employees so that they want to work with you. And when everybody's moving together, sky's the limit. There are unbelievable opportunities out there. And when people make a shift between treating employees as people to be led, as opposed to treating employees as numbers to be managed, great things can happen. And I say that only from my own perspective in over 45 years in the people leading business, whether it was my corporate life or our entrepreneurial life right now. But the, what I'm gonna tell you today is a foundational topic for anybody in any place in any situation. Okay, here we go. Welcome aboard. Today's topic is I want to come back to this picture, which I showed you last time. It's the servant leadership approach. And it is a discussion of as much as we have the corporate typical, typical corporate structure, sorry, on this side, where we have the CEO along with everybody underneath, which is understandable. That's the way uh, businesses are organized, right? But I also talked about this, that the most successful leaders lead from this perspective right here. And this is called the servant leadership approach. And the thing I want to dig into today is where this came from. And I would venture a guess, you haven't heard this before. If you have, great. I didn't make it up. I didn't come up with it. I didn't sit down one and say, hey, let's come up with something new. All I'm doing is reinforcing what was provided to all of us a long time ago. All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna show you a picture. And the picture is one, it's a depiction of an event, not the event, but this is the picture right here. Hope you can see that. That is a picture from the Bible. And that is Jesus washing the disciples' feet, in this particular case, depicting his washing of Peter's feet. Why do I bring this up? Let's check the scripture and see what it says. And then I'll fill in uh, what might be a missing piece here and there in our understanding for today. All right. So here we go. If I go to John chapter 13 in the Bible, verses 5 to 7 and then 12 to 16, we see this dialogue. It goes, then he, Jesus, poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with his towel. Jesus replied, you don't understand yet the meaning of what I'm doing, but soon it will be clear to you. And the soon does come a little bit later. That soon was a long time ago from our perspective. But uh, he was referencing the day of Pentecost, actually. After washing their feet, he put on his robe and returned to his place at the table. And he asked him a question. Do you understand what I just did? Jesus said. You've called me your teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that's who I am. So. Here's the contrast. If I'm your teacher and Lord and have washed your feet, then you should follow the example of what I've sent for you and wash one another's feet. Now do for each other what I've just done for you. What is the point? 
the act of washing the disciples' feet is an act of refreshing the person's walk. If you go back to Mark chapter 6, where Jesus sent the disciples two by two out in the countryside, one of the instructions he gave them was, when you walk into a city, stay in one house. Don't go bouncing around from one place to the other. Stay in one place. And if you are not received, then as you leave, dust, uh, remove the dust from your feet. Shake the dust off. So the whole thing about feet, the dust in that case, and the washing of the feet here, has to do with impacting people's walks. Now, what does that mean as a leader of people? We have the opportunity continually to impact people's walk. Now, we're not going to be there and take people by the hand and guide them down the street. That's not the point. But if you treat your employees and lead them as they should be led, they will follow you. And their path will be where it needs to be for you and for them. Because while they are following you, you are also allowing them and helping them become uh, more of who they would like to be. Now, we haven't gotten to that topic here in this conversation. But one of the things, let's step back a minute. One of the things, about, one of the responsibilities we have as a leader, if you want to lead people versus manage them, is that you listen with your two ears and you speak with one mouth, two ears, one mouth, use them accordingly. Because while they are doing things for you, you want to do things for them. Through the mutual cooperation, great things happen. Now, while you're doing this mutual cooperation things, has anybody forgotten who the leader is? No. You're the leader. But when people are following you willingly, you just get a whole lot further, a whole lot faster. Everybody's smiling because everybody's on a journey that they support. And I think that's an awesome thing. So the point here is that as we consider what Jesus did here, and that was that he prepared and helped mold the path for his disciples because he was going to be leaving shortly, right? And then they were going to be moving on their own through his inspiration. You want your people to move through your inspiration. Yours won't be quite the same as Jesus, but you are a leader and leaders inspire. Let's go back to this slide right here, this picture, right? Down here, this leader is training these people to go out and do their work willingly. Remember what I said once uh, last week or last, uh, last video? Ronald Reagan had a saying, surround yourself with good people and let them do their work. Two things in this broad bucket discussion. People become good two ways, natural abilities and what we train them to do. And when both of those things come together and we have trained them well, we can, act, we can take that position here, which is one of support and our people, our team, our business unit will do excellent work. You can count on it. So let me wrap up by simply saying this, a, a, another phrase from last week. If you take care of the members of your business unit, they will take care of you. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for listening.